Hello, I'm David Lamb, Chairman of Multibeam Corporation. Multibeam is a proud member of the eBeam Initiative. The semiconductor chip makers are not quite used to talking about security of the IC devices they produce. We are indebted to the eBeam Initiative for providing this forum for an industry dialogue. I also want to acknowledge the support and help of uh, Mike Borza of Synopsys and my multi-beam colleagues, Mike Smiling and Ted Prescott. The Internet of Things, or IOTs, have been hailed to be the next major drivers for our industry's growth. With 50 billion devices coming on the market within a few years, all connected to the internet. But the IoT is a two-edged sword. In addition to offering significant uh, convenience and efficiencies, the IoT also opens the door for malicious intrusions on an unprecedented scale. In this talk, I'll introduce a new thinking about IoT security and the technology to implement the solution. Let us start with a few recent reports. Cyber attacks increasingly target the energy sector, which includes oil refineries, pipelines, hydropower plants, and nuclear power plants. In Ukraine last December, a regional power grid was shut down in a well-coordinated, sophisticated attack. Several hospitals were hit this year with ransomware. The hospitals all paid to get back their operation and to minimize patient suffering. SWIFT is a global money transfer network. It was breached multiple times in different countries this year, and the cyber thieves got away with many millions of dollars. So here we are. The energy sector, power grid, hospitals, and financial and banking network. These are only four of the 16 critical infrastructure categories identified and defined by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. These attacks are real and dangerous. But if you read this report, you will find that they don't blame, sometimes they don't even mention IoT. So what's the IoT got to do with this? We'll look into the IoT device in just one moment. But first, let us look at a video clip excerpted from the PBS Nova documentary series on the subject. This was aired last October. Imagine a world with 50 billion microprocessors attached to the internet. That's 50 billion points of attack. Instead of bullets and bombs, you use bits and bytes. All you would need to do is take out about nine substations in an attack that could result in a blackout for the majority of the U.S. that could last weeks or months. Inside the IoT device is a um, simple microcontroller with sensors and actuators, connectivity to the internet, but otherwise it is really have limited resources and memory. It is small, inexpensive, and can be integrated into things like light bulbs, doorknobs, uh, motion sensing uh, devices in your home. You can access and control it over the internet from your cell phone. It is cool. But what is not in the device is most troubling. It has no defense against hacking. To understand the impact of IoT on critical infrastructure. 
let's take a look at the system that controls the infrastructure. The ICS or Industrial Control System has been used for decades in advanced economies for automation. They are important for higher productivity and efficiency as well as economic growth. Central to the ICS are two subsystems, the SCADA and the PLC. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. PLC is Programmable Logic Controller. The SCADA system monitors and controls the entire infrastructure and constantly collect real-time data and analyze them and make adjustments to the PLC if necessary but it has no network security. The PLC, on the other hand, has the very simple microcontroller, sensor and actuator, and communicate with the SCADA system through the SCADA network. It is physically small, about this size, typically embedded in very large electromechanical systems in the infrastructure, and programmed to do some specific tasks such as monitoring temperature, pressure, flow rate, and liquid levels, and things like that, and turn, and off, turn on and off switches and valves. It also has no defense against hacking. But despite these vulnerabilities, for many years, the control system and the infrastructure were both safe and secure. How come? That is because they were isolated, self-contained, unconnected to the, real, to the outside world. Obscurity is security, they say, but not anymore. About 25, 30 years ago, many companies began to network all their computing and peripheral devices into a network. And before you know it, the SCADA system was patched onto the company network. Then came the internet. And the SCADA system today is accessible over the internet. That was not intended originally. This is the reason why critical infrastructure is very vulnerable today. Now, I must add that since Stuxnet, both the SCADA system and the PLC have been significantly improved. But the risk of cyber attack on critical infrastructure remain very high. The PLC is often referred to as an industrial IoT. Let us now take a look at a distinctly different class of IoTs that run our cars. Are connected cars secure with just software security alone? One metric to look at the complexity and reliability of software is the number of lines of code. And this is an excerpt, a diagram excerpted from a very large report from informationisbeautiful.net. And the vertical axis on the, right, on the left is the millions of lines of code. You can see that a high-end automobile today have about 100 million lines of code. Larger than Facebook, including its backend software, and Boeing 787 combined. You can appreciate the challenge of finding a bug in the software. Now let's pause for one moment and take a look at a short video clip from the PBS documentary that we saw earlier. This car hacking experiment was conducted by a professor with his students at the University of Washington. Modern automobiles have tens, sometimes up to a hundred different computers inside them. Essentially, we wanted to know what might an unauthorized party be able to do with an automobile straight off the lot. The model they chose had a built-in emergency communication system. They used that system to call the car and remotely force malware into its embedded computers. 
giving them control over electrical and mechanical systems. We've unlocked the brake controller, and uh, just to verify, you have your helmet on and all the safety precautions in place, right? That's right, helmet on, gloves on, strapped in, ready to go. Great, okay, go ahead and go. And we'll be applying your brakes shortly. Get about now. Ooh, yeah, that worked. This FBI warning came out a few months ago. Now we have covered connected infrastructure, connected cars. Let's take a look at the connected homes. Are connected homes safe or hazardous? As asserted by one of the recent Wall Street Journal reports. The journal reports on one of the biggest cyber attacks in history just two weeks ago. It shows that the uh, hackers were able to insert malware into security cameras, video recorders, in millions and millions of homes and offices, and take control of these devices and use them to attack their targets. The attack was so serious, uh, security experts are raising concerns about the IoT devices which has begun to populate our homes. So if obscurity is not security, is connectivity a vulnerability? Hackers are known to breach software security by exploiting defects like coding errors, design flaws, or legitimate backdoors. But now, with 50 billion devices coming online, all connected to the internet, and none has cyber defense, it will greatly enlarge the attack surface. My Barza hit the nail on the head when he said this, and I quote, a successful breach of one subsystem becomes the staging point for attack on other subsystems. This is why and how IoT makes the connected infrastructure, connected cars, and connected homes less secure. The IoT devices would need hardware as well as software security. First, it needs software updates to patch vulnerabilities. It also needs hardware security to authenticate software. And indeed, chip embedded security is the foundation of a secure system, experts agree. Here's one scenario on infrastructure security. Suppose the hacker were able to breach the company firewall and they work through the uh, company network and get onto the SCADA system. Now we want to take control of the PLC. If the PLC chip is embedded with security, along with security protocols and procedures, it will be able to determine whether to allow or deny entry. Such authentication would potentially prevent a cyber attack. Now, if you say, this is great, how come it's not being used today? It is a good question and a simple one, but not so simple. The reason is, our industry since the beginning always produced integrated circuits with optical lithography. The optical printing method is like cookie cutting. All chips produced are identical. This is great for high volume production, which is what our industry is well known for. But there's a roadblock for embedding unique information in each chip. In the IoT connected world, we have to think differently. So what's Multibeam's solution? It's direct electron writing or do. It personalizes the IC, which are otherwise identical. Here is the top view of the dual writer. These four boxes represent the writing modules. 
Each one is about the half of the size of your office desk. Inside the dual writer is a bunch of miniature columns and the wafer and the moving stage. These columns are very tiny, about the size of uh, a marking pen that may be on your desk. And so the uh, module itself is about the size of an edge module. And multiple of these modules can be integrated into a regular size cluster tool. It doesn't have to be four. It could be more, it could be less. But somewhere between one and three modules would give dual throughput writing that can match most production flows. Initially, we will write chip ID, MAC address, private key encryption, and other information. MAC address is basically an ID for internet communication. Every IoT device would have one. Chip ID is the best defense against counterfeiting and tampering and enables supply chain traceability. The private key is really the ultimate secure authentication of software. Both IDs are readable but not changeable. The private key is not accessible at all but it works within the encryption engine. In the next couple of slides, we will take a look at what does the dual system do and how does it embed security. Here's an example of a VIA1 layer simplified. So here is the section of the production flow with optical lithography to pattern VIA holes and the wafer will continue to completion. If security is desired to be embedded in the VIA1 layer, then the uh, dual writing would come after uh, the, the, this process and followed by etch and clean and continue to completion. You can also combine both via hole patterning and security embedding into one single step using eBeam solutions, which we also provide. You can see that embedding security is straightforward, fast, and cost efficient. It also does not in interrupt the production process. Let's now see how do embed security. And here is an example of encryption key being embedded in the uh, shift register of a system on a chip or SOC. At the center is a circuit design of a shift register with multiple uh, flip-flops. To the left is the layout of the VIA1. Now, the design includes high and low signals as shown here, and of course, and into the gate. The dual rate holds high if the security code requires a one. If the security code requires a zero, then it will run in the right in the low position. So when this is all done and the wafer is processed, all the ones and zeros in the encryption key will be embedded into the shift register. The embedding of security has no impact on chip design, nor does it have any effect on the functioning of the chip. Here's the bottom line. Can the IoT world be made more secure? We believe yes, but it would need a fresh approach. More specifically, security must be designed in, it's not an afterthought. This applies to software and hardware, especially chip design. Every IoT chip must have security written in it using enabling tools such as do, with chip embedded security, complementing software security, working hand in hand, cyber defense will be greatly enhanced. Now with the solutions going to be available, it's up to us to make the IoT world more secure. Let's just do it.